Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at Alton today, Alton in Hampshire. You can see the South Western Railway on that side of the fence. We're here on this side of the fence at the Mid Hants Railway. Today is another episode of Miniature Railway Britain. And yes, I know the Mid Hants isn't a miniature railway, but there is a miniature railway further up the line. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the Mid Hants Railway to get us to a miniature railway. So get two railways in one video. Nice old sign, Southern Electric. So electric trains on this side. It's diesel at the moment, although I'm here an electric going out. We're expecting to find some steam further up the line. So you may have been able to hear at the beginning of the video the, the sound of a diesel loco. That was a class 20. So we're going to walk up here. This station um, used, to have, used to have two foot bridges. They've put a new bridge with lifts in, so that's good it's accessible. But it kind of feels something's missing now. The old foot bridge has gone, which is somewhere around here. There's a nice uh, WH Smith selling coffees and tea, so perhaps I'll grab myself a drink before I get on the train. So our loco has disappeared up, up here somewhere. So what we'll do, we'll wait and see the loco come back, and that's going to take us up to Ropley, where the miniature railway is. We're going to go for a ride on the Ropley Miniature Railway. We are approaching the strong country, as that sign with a blue bullet Pacific shows us. So let's wait and see our diesel loco arrive and up up over the Alps we're going. So we've arrived at Ropley behind this class 20. I'm going up onto the bridge where we should get our first view of the miniature railway. My plan is to do a little tour of the station first, but from this bridge we should be able to see the steam loco arrive. And I can just see the miniature railway in the field over there. So the steam loco is due from this way. We'll see that arrive and there's our train. There's also the edges and everything over there. So we'll go and have a look around all of that before we go on the miniature railway. So let's wait here and see the steam train.
So having watched the steam loco depart, it's now time to go and find the Mahitra Railway. On a day like this, Rockley Station is a really, really nice place to be. It's nice and quiet, there's a few people about, and it's just got that atmosphere of a country railway station. A little bit in the middle of nowhere, we're quite high up. The next station, Medstead and Formarks, I believe is the highest railway station in the south of England. But this one, so it's just it's slightly further down the hill. So what we're going to do, we'll go and find a miniature railway. It says entrance. So we'll have a look at the railway, have our ride, and then we'll go up and down, because I think it's a out and back, it's a ten and a quarter inch gauge railway. So there's the station there, it's called Rockley High Level. So what we'll do, we'll have a ride to the other end and see what we can find.
So having an enjoyable ride up and down the track. It's about a kilometre long. Nice and nice straight on ride. We come back to the standard gauge line. Now there's a footpath here, which is quite an exciting footpath because you've literally got a railway each side. So my plan is by walking up here, we'll see the class 20 come past. Well, there's a class 67. 10 and a quarter inch 67. And there was our 47. So that was Ropley high level. And also this footpath gives us the opportunity to have a look. There's a, this um, pretend steam locomotive called Hasty. I remember seeing that. She visited Casher Road Park one day, just for a day once. I remember going to see her there. So we are literally between two railway lines. 10 and a quarter standard gauge. So we'll have a look up here. We'll see the 20 come past. And then by the time the class 20 goes along, the steam train should be due which I'm going to have a round trip with the steam train before going home. So it's uh, quite an exciting day. Oh, another thing to show you, if you might be interested. The track's fairly level. It goes up 1 in 50. Just see the marker. Ironically, as that line goes up, the standard line goes down. It's very nice scenery. As I was coming back on the miniature train, I was looking across the valley. I just thought it was really, really nice miniature railway. High up on the hill at this country railway station on standard gauge line just you know perfect sort of place you know i could spend hours here i've been to the midhand railway a few times in the past i don't think i've ever made a video here probably one day i mean this video is for the miniature railway but obviously the midhands features quite a lot one day perhaps i'll do a branch line britain and we'll explore the midhand railway properly and you know look at everything of the midhands i think that's their engine ship behind there we can't really see much from this side so what i'm going to do you hang around up here, I think the footpath goes down a little bit, should get a view of the class 20. Having had a very enjoyable ride on the train, seeing the Class 20 pass, I thought we'd just have a walk through the station because this has to be one of the most attractive railway stations I've ever come across. I mean, in the spring, all the tulips out, so it makes it even more attractive. So the steam train due fairly soon, so I was going to get that up to Arlesford and then maybe have a wander around there. I thought, because it's known as the watercress line, I should try and find some actual watercress beds, which, you know, I won't have to walk far to find. But all I want to do now is wander up this way again. So it's a very nice tropery here. You've got the uh, Ropley station. Okay, right, now that bell, I'm fairly sure that means the train's left Medstead and Fullmarks. So I've probably haven't got a huge amount of time, but I've got time to show you what I wanted to show you. So that's good. There's a very good viewing area of the yard. We've already had a bit of a look at the yard when earlier on the S15 was sat here, she was watering. We'll see what else there is. So we've got the 2MT there on shed. So that was, as I said earlier, when I first came to the Midhampton Railway, she was my loco, I rode behind. Travelled behind her and Bodmin. Is that? That's the train coming. That's my train arriving. So let's see this arrive and I'm gonna have to go and jump on it. Or do I point it out from here? Um, up there, the bridge, up there over the shed, that is known as the Harry Potter Bridge. It used to be at King's Cross, and in the first of the Harry Potter films, that's the bridge you see Harry Potter walking over. I'm now going to have to run because I have a train to catch. <laughs>
come here with a class 47, which is quite nice because we had a miniature class 47, 47, 834, and now we've just had 47, 579. We did have a round trip with a steam loco. I'll put all the steam loco footage in a different video. So have a look out for that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna watch the loco. It's already gonna run round, which is gonna go back to Rockley. So I'm gonna watch that. And then, as soon as it's the watercrest line, I thought we'd go and find some watercrest beds before I end the video. And here we are, this is New Arlesford town centre. Almost feels like an old town. If I was to, someone told me there's New Arlesford, I'd be looking for somewhere more modern. But this is New Arlesford. Old Arlesford is a village about half a mile or so in that direction. The railway station's not too far from here. You can just see the parish church railway station is basically just behind it. So Arlesford grew up around the watercress industry and a lot of the watercress, some of it would have gone by train up to London, hence the mid Hans Railway also being known as the Watercrest Line. So, as I said, having had the ride on the miniature railway, I just thought it would be a nice way to round off today by going to look for some watercress beds. Now, there's a river down there at the bottom of the hill, so I think that's where I might find these watercress beds. So from Islesford Town Centre, I followed a road called Mill Lane. It's taking me down to here, the River Arl. This isn't the main river, this is just a leap. The main river is over there. Now, the River Arl, you can see where Arlesford gets its name from, Arles Ford, a ford on the River Arl. The River Arl joins up with the River Itchin, and the next station on the closed section of the mid hans Railway towards Winchester was called Itchin Abbott. So you've got two railway stations, or you did have two railway stations in succession with their names after rivers. The water sort of goes into there, and there's a bit of water going off over there. So earlier on, I walked along a path out of the railway each side, the standard gauge and a miniature. Well here I've got a river on that side and on this side got a pretty wild section of the river Arl and not only that we've got this cottage it's called Fuller's Mill Cottage and it's built right across the river so this would have been the mill and um, there's more water going off there there's just sort of water going everywhere so I'm sure I'm going to find some watercress beds soon. There's a very very nice garden on that side this cottage is pretty cool, just jutting out across the river. Like I say, it was a mill, so it's fairly sort of obvious as to why it's built like this. But what a place that would be to live, if you live there. And there's some wisteria growing there, so in a month or so's time, that's going to look really nice. So we'll have a look at this side of the mill. And there's a footpath sign. This is called the Watercrest Way, this path. There's a little sign there, it says Watercrest Way. There's also a footpath going that way. Well, that is a house of a difference. Nice thatched cottage over the river. There's more water coming out over there. Anyway, I'm going to follow the river all a bit further on round the corner and hopefully we're going to find these watercress beds. Well, I've just been for a very pleasant walk. I continued along the river all. I walked up over the hill right round in a big circuit past the old Arlesford and I'm now heading back into new Arlesford. As you can see, that's the river and there's a swan and some ducks and look at this this is some watercress beds and it's really quite fascinating so the water sort of flows along the top and then it kind of goes down various different galleries and all this watercress you know would, would have been taken by train up to london i suspect now it goes on a lorry of some sort but it's really quite a fascinating landscape it's sort of at first glance you think it just looks like a sort of overgrown pond 
that's it's meant to have some sort of water feature, but it's, it is a, you know, it's a working farm effectively. It's it's a crop. It's it's just I like it. It's different. Oh look, we can go and have a closer look here. In fact, I'm gonna. I'm supposed to, but I'm going to walk out into the field. So I'm now in the middle of a watercress field. This is possibly the strangest way I've ever ended a miniature railway video, just walking out into a watercress field. But you know, it's a, they're all different. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. And from in the middle of a watercress field, do come and visit the Midhant Railway. Maybe come do this walk for yourself. Goodbye.